Good morning. Yay, we have some time together. I'm so looking forward to Roberto's going to share with us what he knows about AI, and I'm sure it's a lot. And then um, we'll chime in on the things that we use the AI for and, and it helps us. Um, so we'll go around here. And since we had a, got to have a roll call from, from on here, um, we'll go around in the room so you'll know who's here. You want to start, Roberto? Hi, so my name is Roberto. I am the Assistive Technology Specialist here at the Santa Cruz Vista Central Branch. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi guys. My name is um, Yvonne and I'm new to the center, but I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Um, you know me, I'm Betty. And, and this is to my right, my friend Jeannie. She, um, she gave me a ride today, so she's joining in with us. And my name hey, is Jeannie. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> my name is Anna Bettingfeld and I'm a social worker here at the center in Santa Cruz. And today I'm filling in for Sophia, who <laughs> is had to work at our San Jose Center. So we're sharing our today. And um, so I'm helping facilitate. Thanks okay. everybody for coming and sorry for the sorry for the delay. All right, Roberto, would you like to start us up? Um, yes, and so we know everyone who is online. Oh, would you guys go around and say <laughs> your names for sure? I mean, not for sure, but <laughs> for sure. I'm Patrice for sure. For sure, sure I'm Bob. I'm Patrice. <laughs> and I'm, I'm for Brett sure. For, for sure. And I'm Holly for sure. And I'm Lori for sure. Sherry for sure. <laughs> Can you guys please include your last name? Because I'm taking notes. It's all for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Patrice McGinnis, yeah. AG. <laughs> So for sure, Bob Geyer. For sure. And Thank you. Holly Clark. Lori and Modis. Brett, Sherry Wu. Brett Fowler. What was that? Brett, Brett Fowler. Fowler. Okay. Thank you, Brett. And Sherry Wu. Uh, and you said Colonel was here? Uh, actually, she's not. Oh, okay. I, right. I think Hannah Fairbairn just joined. Oh, I see her. Yes, Hannah. Yeah. Hi, Hannah. Hannah's muted. And Pat Haskin. Hi, Pat. It's good to. Hi, Pat. It's good to see you again. Pat's muted. Oh, okay, guys. Can you unmute? Maybe. <clears throat> Oh. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hi, Pat. We got you. Hi, Pat. Oh, good. Oh, this has been an ordeal. <laughs> yes, it has been an ordeal. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. okay. Yeah. It's it's not unusual for me. <laughs> You well, kill me. Good, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Roberto. We are going to talk about um, AI um, apps, and we're mainly going to be focusing on Be My Eyes, Seeing AI, Envision AI, we're all, uh, Google Lookup for those who may be using Google Lookup, um, and we may also talk about other ones such as uh, Pixiebot. We may focus on what are the other ones. We got Ira, for those who like to use Ira. And we have a little bit of, um, what's my third? Okay. Oh, Brian or oh, what, oh, Brian. Brian. Yeah. So, but before I begin, I do want to ask everyone so to think of a moment that one of these apps has helped you and that makes this specific app stand out. Because I know we all have, we may all have one story or two that we won't really want to share and just let everyone know how this app has helped you out on a day-to-day -day basis or just, um, you know, was there when you needed it. So for me, I have used all of these apps um, either as an instructor or as a, you know, uh, person who's also visually impaired. I have used these apps on a frequent basis. 
and I use a combination of them. Sometimes I use three apps at the same time just to kind of get something done. Um, so I use them in combination. I think they all complement each other. And um, I wouldn't say, you know, one is better than the other. I just think that they all have their, um, they all have, what do you call it, their best features and some other features work better on different apps. Mm -hmm. But either way. So we're going to start off with Be My Eyes. And before we begin, I want to mention that with Be My Eyes, I Oh, okay. So I noticed that with Be My Eyes, um, you need a decent internet connection to work. Um, so that's what I noticed with Be My Eyes. Um, so specifically talking about Be My AI, I wanted to mention a few ways people have used this. You can get a scene description of what's around you. You can get, um, you can have it read now. Or you can also, um, what's another way of using it? Can't quite. Tell me what colors do I have on before I leave the house? Yeah, that's another way. <laughs> so, whoever wants to pitch in, that wants to share a story, how Be My AI has helped them, uh, you know, feel free to raise your hand. I will call you out and just think about exactly how Be My AI has helped you. We'll give it a uh, give you a minute to just kind of share if you. If you may. Anyone want to go? I'll go first. All right, Mom. Okay. Um, I use Be My Eyes um, mostly because I first started um, with the AI part of Be My Eyes. But I do call the volunteers to, you know, help me find things if I'm having a difficult time looking for stuff or maybe go through my clothes or... You know, for just little things like that. And um, sometimes when lately I've been yeah. traveling to the store on my own, I've been, um, yeah, this way. I use Be My Eyes to kind of like help me get through um, the items on the shelf. So that's helped me out a lot. Okay, thank you for sharing. And you were talking about that, uh, Be My Eyes uh, called the Motier or yeah, Be My Eyes? Call, oh, call I, one oh. yeah. you know, I, I don't know how to use the AI part that well. Oh, okay. Well, we will kind of go into it. Um, okay. You guys, we have somebody, somebody new just came in. Can you please identify yourself? Uh, I'm my name is Juan. Uh, Juan? Hi, Juan. And uh, the last time I've been here, one of these, like, uh, it's been very sort of in the night. I think oh, okay. Romero may remember. What's yes. your last name, Juan? That is Juan. So did everybody hear that? Uh, those who are not here in the room, it's from the Desma. And he was last here in June? July. July for tips although and tricks. I, although I was here last week with the games, of course. Oh, great. Great. We're well, welcome. And these are new people, I guess. Yes, we have new people. Um, yeah. We're just growing. <laughs> yeah. We're just growing. Yeah, we're just growing. That's a good thing. That's good. Yes. Um, Baby, would you like to share any? Sure. Thoughts? So, um, like I said before, I, I I do actually. I did it this morning of um, after I get dressed, or else I put it on the bed before I get dressed and find out, make sure that the colors that I'm going to wear are accessible. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, not accessible, but nah. yeah. When I walk out, they won't go. Oh no, Baby, you need to go back to the closet again. That won't work. <laughs> So um, it, it, if I'm in doubt, that it really helps me that way. I've also used it for, um, you know, reading uh, reading things that I need to find out about. Um, I, I use a different app for just because I'm used to it for um, reading the mail and seeing who it's addressed to and all that kind of stuff. And we'll, I'll say that when you get around to that. App. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I be my... AI be my eyes. It's an awesome app, and it just continues to just get better and better. Yeah. Hello, fun. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we're going around the table and over Zoom, and we're just specifically talking about how be my AI or be my eyes has helped you. Um, if would you like to share a story of how so, they specifically helped you? So one time I was at school and uh, and I told uh, um. 
a specialist of mine that I created a Be My Eyes account and I wanted to try it out. And so um, we found like a painting or a picture of some of somebody. And so I'm like, you know what? We're gonna use it on the picture. And so we used it and the uh, and the volunteer described the picture uh, very well. And I also used the AI part of the app. Um, it's literally just sitting, it's like I heard. What I did is I shared a picture, like for example, of a game, and I asked it what the game was about, and then it was describing the game to me. Well, that's good. Um, <clears throat> thanks for sharing. Okay. Anyone online would like to take a turn? This is Lori, and I've used uh, Be My Eyes AI a lot for um, pictures describing, like today there was a product that I wanted, I had bought from Amazon, and I couldn't see the ingredients um, on it very well. So my sister in another state sent me the video link to the picture. So I went to the picture and then shared it with Be My Eyes to describe it because, and then Be My Eyes listed all the ingredients for me because I wasn't able to do it with the website. So that was really helpful. All right, tell them about the um, tomatoes of the picture that you sent us. Oh yeah, um, in my garden um, about a month or so ago, I sent some of my friends a picture of my garden with my tomatoes or oh that's right I picked some and put them on the yeah. counter and took a picture myself and then had be my eyes describe it and then I sent the link to my friends and they were able to go to the link and have the description and the picture really cool yeah thank you Lori um, yeah. I don't see anyone else okay uh, thanks for sharing. Um, I'll share a quick story about how I use Be My AI. Oh, yeah, I'll hear your story. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with Be My AI, we, when it first came out, um, when it comes to TikTok or to Instagram, what we do is um, we take a, we may choose a photo in our photo gallery and we'll feed it to um, Be My AI. Be My AI will give a description of the photo. And then we will upload that description and the photo along um, on Instagram. And we kind of ask people to do that in our families. We're like, hey, you know, it would be lovely if you there's a description on there. So this way we know, you know, what's going on. Otherwise, it's just like, oh, picture of so and so. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I feel like I can't participate in social media like that. But with uh, Be My AI, when it first started to kind of get released, I noticed that there was a bunch of, um, us who were low vision and blind, we started to share pictures with Be My AI. And, and we just felt this just new good feeling of being able to um, participate in social media just a bit more. So we were happy about how that happened. Um, now, for there's something called a service directory on Be My Eyes. Oh, yeah. Has anyone used it? I have no hands. No. Okay, so the service directory on Be My Eyes is something I kind of um, let clients who I've been working with. I let them know like if you want to get in contact with some accessibility support group, um, Be My Eyes has a catalog. And in this catalog, you'll see different vendors um, such as um, the big companies such as Apple, Google, or some transportation company, or even Head and Shoulders, um, maybe um, uh, Alta. And so these companies have partnered up with Be My Eyes and they basically have an accessibility accessibility line and they may be able to thoroughly explain their products a bit more. So for example, if you connect with um, Head and Shoulders, Head and Shoulders will video connect with you and they will be able to kind of give you a better uh, idea of which what products does what, so if you're trying to shop around and you want to know, you know, how this product may help you as a blind person, or maybe, you, you know, you want to know the ingredients or stuff like that, um, they have a service director that you can use to connect with them directly. 
So um, that is something I haven't quite found a use for it. Um, I do go on there and I just let people know that it exists, but I haven't quite used it. So um, I, I found out about it through a podcast. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. And so I, huh? Apple Biz has also joined up with them. Well, they actually were bought by me by my eyes. Right. It was about to be shut down. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were, they were about to be shut down. Huh? Good thing that, you know, it was purchased and we got saved. Yeah. But, Thank you. Um, and I also wanted to mention a, a specific feature here is um, using Siri shortcuts with Be My Eyes. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know who uses it, but if you're in Santa Cruz, you may experience some type of problem. Ooh. When you ask Siri to call a volunteer, um, it will call the volunteer center. And so the Siri shortcut for Be My Eyes is, hey Siri, call volunteer. And when you set this up, it will immediately call volunteer through Be My Eyes, but if you're in Santa Cruz, it won't do that. Huh. Um, so mine is set as call volunteer one. And so now I can say, hey Siri, call volunteer one, and it will uh, you know, call to a volunteer through Be My Eyes. Hmm. Um, so this is a feature I love using on the go. That's true that it doesn't do that. <laughs> what was that? that? That's true that it doesn't do it. In this motion to your front door. Yeah, it, it, it will do it, but you just got to kind of maybe change the um, Siri shortcut because it's going to do something. <laughs> Call your... Yeah, I know. Um, oh, yeah. my goodness. Everybody's serious. What not? Uh, okay, so let's go on to seeing AI. Well, let's wait to see. Does anybody have any questions? Now, a study in one meter, volume one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What do you want? No hands? No, no questions. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go on to seeing AI. So, seeing AI, AI has um, a very, um, there's a lot. Of, sorry, my phone is going on. Okay. <laughs> 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 Yeah, probably. Uh, huh? Most likely. So, okay. Um, seeing AI has an enormous amount of um, tools, and it's very similar to Envision AI, and it's also very similar to Google Lookout. So uh, I guess we'll kind of briefly talk about each of these three apps, because they're very, very similar. But they also have different features that makes them stand out. And so we're going to talk about the short text uh, on seeing AI. Um, now, I just so you, let you guys know that Scene AI has series shortcuts for practically each of these channels. Um, if you would like to use that, let me know. We can set it up. But, you know, series shortcuts exist on Scene AI. Let's talk about short text. So, for short text, anyone want to talk about their personal experience with that? Oh, I would. Um, because Bevy and I one day, um, uh, we're being explorers and we figured out how to put the Siri shortcut so that um, I don't have to open uh, seeing AI. All I have to do is say, you know, hey, S, recognize short text. And it goes right there and I can read the mail without doing, you know, any of the going through the menu and then flicking up, looking down, dancing twice around. It's really, it's really great. The Siri shortcuts are not easy we we uh we labored uh, hard but we figured it out but i but i think they're worth it i mine doesn't work patty <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry well roberto can rescue for sure but yeah but i do think just for seeing um quick things like what's the mail you know you're just going through your mail like uh, you know and separating it into you know good no good and i think that um it's, you know, if you if you hold it up, you'll see your entire computer um, in a laptop. It'll start reading everything that's on the screen on your laptop. It's 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 kind of um, wigged out, you know. It just starts going, but it's really handy for just short, quick looks at things. Print. Thank you, Patrice. Sure. Anyone else want to share? I do. I use the seeing AI, seeing AI more than any of them to, for the same reason. I read the um, incoming mail of which 
person it belongs to. And um, also packages that come in. Sometimes they're for me, sometimes they're for my daughter. And if I open hers, she doesn't get, she doesn't like it too much. <laughs> so um, I I spend a lot of time finding, okay, whose name is this? Yeah, yeah, I get the Henniger part, but what's the first name? Yeah, anyways, um, I really love it. It's been a very big help for me and um, being able to do that. And also I read my vitamins, you know, my supplements with it, um, tells me what what's what and really gives me information and in anything that I'm needing to find out what is this and not having to wait for a sighted person. So I love this app. This is Holly and I'll, I'll share. <clears throat> also, um, I use Be My AI a lot as well as seeing AI. I mean, me throughout my whole day, they're becoming my best friends. And on the uh, be, uh, seeing AI, I use it, for example, in the kitchen. If I just want a quick spot on something, for example, uh, what's in this can, if it's, I'm questioning its placement or what it sounds like, is it the diced tomatoes or is it the blah, blah? And just to get a little spot of, of uh, the beginning of the, of the name of it is fine. And, but if I want to get more information and ask questions, then I would use my B, my AI and uh, take a picture so then I could ask questions and be interactive to get, you know, more information like the ingredients, et cetera. So amazing apps, totally amazing. And I'm so glad we're doing this class. Thank you, Roberto and Bevy. Yeah, thanks all for sharing. You're welcome. Anybody, anybody else? It's so easy to, to use. I mean, you know, even if somebody's new to voiceover, those apps are just so easy. Um, with B by AI, you do have to take a picture, but with seeing AI, you don't even have to take a picture. You know, it just starts telling you what it sees. I honestly wish I could, there was a, uh, right now there's not, that I've seen a series shortcut for take a picture on B by AI, but I wish there was where I can just say, you know, hey, yes, um, Take a B AI picture or something like that. Right. Just, yeah. just instantly do it. You know, that'd be that would be lovely. Maybe be yeah. on the developer. <laughs> but uh, I know I'm just like, why didn't you do that too? But anyway, <laughs> I know for um for me when I'm kind of showing people off, it, it is true seeing AI. Um I kind of scan our AT room around when I'm first showing it off. And you know, they're so amazed of they were so happy that they can read the first page of a book and just read it or maybe they just want to read the synopsis of a book because you know their eyes get tired so when they're looking at books in the library or something like that they can just read the synopsis right away and they're like oh this is lovely my eyes won't be getting so tired anymore or maybe the colors are just so difficult to see but you know seeing ai has helped them now there are some backfires on the series i mean um short text on seeing ai and that's if you have multiple documents or items in view, then it will kind of read item left to item right, and it could get a little messy. So that's where the document scanner on seeing AI I I really comes into play. Yeah. I love the document scanner, but I will, uh, let's see who wants to share about it. Document scanner on seeing AI, who wants to go? I, I, I will, again, I, 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 it's so helpful. It's like I have a piece of paper, it, you know, it just feels like a piece of paper. I have no idea what's on it, and I can put it over the top of it and it'll tell me left it left edge isn't visible or right it you know whatever so that it gets me centered and then double tap it and it takes a picture and immediately starts reading um, what that document is so uh, no matter what it is so it it's very very helpful for that it can also do it by itself as well it could go what it can take the picture by itself mm -hmm. too when you have the whole Oh, that's right. It does take the picture by itself. You're absolutely right. Yeah. You. yeah. you just hold it still and it takes it all by itself. Thank you, Juan. Anyone else want to share? Um, I use seeing AI for um, um, reading barcodes and labels on products and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's helped me out a lot to understand like the clean supplies that I have in my home and um, the ingredients, making sure I'm not 
makes him stuff to make a toxic bomb or something. <laughs> you know? Oh my goodness, there's no way. <laughs> no, it gets that way. You can mix chemicals in it really bad. I know you. No, not that you know. It just gets like the smell gets very strong and it's not good. Only bad thing in my mouth. You guys are big people. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, yeah, it's it helps a lot with reading barcodes and on um, products, food products, you know, you know, any the products that you may want to buy or in your home so you can identify what things are. Thanks. Thanks for sharing you Um so I think for the document scanner, I do want to mention with Envision AI, there is a special feature when it comes to the document scanner. And with the Envision AI, you actually can ask follow-up questions regarding your documents. Mm -hmm. So if you scan maybe, so the document scanner, you can scan more than one document. So for example, if you receive a pamphlet of seven sheets and you use, you know, um, you scan one document at a time, once you get to the seventh document, you're done. Well, I mean, it's up to you if you want to read the whole thing, but, um, or listen to the whole text, but with Envision AI, you can actually have it generate a summary or even ask a follow-up question within the menu, uh, within the text. So that's a special feature that Envision AI has good to know. Um, that I feel like makes it Envision AI stand out. Uh, another follow-up thing with that is that you can also have Envision AI translate this document. So if the document is in Spanish, such as like if you're a restaurant menu, um, Envision AI can translate the Spanish menu into an English menu. And then of course you can ask a follow-up question afterwards. So this is something I feel like it's important to measure that, mm -hmm. mention that Envision AI includes. Oh, I think I've downloaded that out there now. That's great, thank you. Anyone have any, um, anyone else wanna share? I know uh, we were gonna talk about product scanning, so we can move on to that. Mm -hmm. I know uh, Yvonne mentioned how she reads um, uh, you know, her chemicals in her house. Anyone else want to mention uh, product scanning? I do. <laughs> this is Lori, and I use product, the barcode scanner, a lot on Seeing AI, um, especially when I want to know exact ingredients. Um, there's a lot more packaged things and cans of food that seem to have a barcode, but there's still a lot that aren't registered yet. But I do find it very helpful. Um, in regards to what you mentioned, yeah, there are some, I think that's why we, it's good to, for us to, when we use multiple tools, because the product scanning, yes, there's only so many grocery items that are available, um, but when they are available, what I do like is that it lists, you know, such as the uh, nutritional facts, and it might even include cooking instructions. So if you're scanning like maybe a frozen meal, you know, a pizza or something like that, it will tell you the cooking instruction for the microwave or for the oven or something like the air fryer. So I think that's, um, I like that feature that it includes that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, I also know for those who don't use voiceover, uh, these tools, you know, there's a play button and you're able to use a play button, and, you know, you just hit the play pause button just to kind of hear the description um, or maybe the text being read out to you instead of using voiceover. Oh, so yeah. good to know that you don't need voiceover to use this app. It's very fun, friendly to those that don't use voiceover. That's really good information. I didn't know that. Like for those who are low vision. Yeah, and if you're low vision and your eyes get fatigued or maybe you experience blurriness or reading glasses aren't just working out today, there, there is a play button that just kind of announces, you know, the, um, information. So really good to know about Envision AI, Seeing AI, Google Lookout, um, those three apps. Um, besides product scanning, we also have uh, a person detection. Oh, yeah. Has anyone tried that out? No. Oh, yeah. I once faced it. at somebody that told me that the person was, like, older than, than how they were. <laughs> <laughs> How their voice sounded? You know, like it told me, like, like when I faced that the person, it told me, like, that they, that picture tells me that they look older than. Oh, yeah. 
I know. older than they actually were. Yeah, I, they actually are. Yeah, I totally understand what you're saying because I really don't like it with <laughs> be my AI and it gets my um, face or my hands. I don't like the way that it <laughs> interprets that. <laughs> you know what? Um, so, so I'm sorry. I think when Stacy was here, still we tried it and took a picture of her, and she had her hair combed all the way back, and she. We were laughing because it described her as a man. Oh. <laughs> you know, um, I was just going to say this, Patrice. That happened um, when uh, seeing I out very came out. You know, at the beginning, you know, and it, you know, it keeps developing and getting better. But that exact thing happened where someone in the group they said it was a seventy-year-old man and it was a sixty-year-old woman, and, and she was not happy. And um, I thought, okay, this is this is a loaded dice. We need to be careful with this because okay. you know, it, it, I yeah. Like. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I really got to know Stacy though. <laughs> um, yeah, that that is a very interesting experience there. So I was speaking um, a person detection, which the text um, you can add someone's face oh, yeah. here. See, uh, see an AI library. And what it does is, let's just say I take a picture of myself. Mm -hmm. um, it can save the geometric features of my face. And so if someone is looking for me in a crowd of people or at a store, or maybe I'm looking for my child because my daughter decided to run away with while we're playing a hide and seek at the park. Mm -hmm. it, the goal is to help you find that person with seeing AI. And I'll tell you all, person detected on the right, person mm -hmm. detected on the left. You can, of course, give this person a name. So if, for example, my daughter, Natalie, it will be like, okay, your daughter's to the right, uh, more to the right, more to the right, about 10 feet, 10 feet ahead. So more or less, that's kind of what it does. However, mm -hmm. I notice it, 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 it confuses. Uh, from my personal experience, it gets a little confused. Mm -hmm. um, so it will call another kid, my daughter, and so, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, mister, you're yeah. Child. <laughs> but um it works it just i noticed it's, it still needs some work on the um the, that specific feature so that feature exists on envision ai as well um same thing you know i experienced the same thing there and also works on orion and once again it's you know with orion and what was the other one? google lookup similar situation i think this feature can still be improved um I think we want to talk about colors, uh, using it for colors or maybe light detection or um, so or currency detection. Ooh. I think currency and light detection works great, and colors don't work with a dark. Yeah, that's my experience too. I love I love I use it all the time for currency. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just don't get away. I have an app on my phone called IO. It identifies currency really, really good and really, really quick. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, I know I use it too. It, it, it does help out um, with currency right away. Mm -hmm. um, colors, I can't, I'm kind of colorblind. So I've been using it, but I noticed that depending what light is being emitted from the light bulb, you know, that will throw off mm -hmm. <laughs> the colors of your clothing. So if the sunlight is coming in, then maybe your clothing will look like, the, you know, it will tell you the right thing. But if the sunlight's coming in through a red curtain, you know, and then the red curtain is Putting, I'm getting another color throughout the room and maybe yeah. wearing a specific color. Well, well, there goes your, you know, it's going to get confused of what colors you're wearing. So, yes, um, colors, I feel like it can still improve. Um, yeah, Microsoft is still looking at the app. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about the lighting? Anyone want to mm -hmm. speak on behalf of lighting or? Lighting meaning telling us whether the light's on or off. Yeah, so the other stuff. I think that works really good. If I'm not sure if, the, um, uh, if somebody else is, you know, my daughter's not home yet and it's dark, um, I'm not sure if, if the light outside is on or off. I can open up the door and just, you know, shine it up there and it'll do its little noise. I haven't used it. Oh, no. No. And then I know that. Um, be, I mean, seeing AI has something kind of like Be My Eyes, right? It's called Seeing Preview. 
And what it does is it kind of gives you a preview of the of your scene description. Um, it gives you a quick brief description, right? So it'll give you like a one quick sentence summary. And then if you double tap, it will kind of give you more of a uh, more detailed description. Um, so this is, I think, fairly similar to uh, Be My Eyes. Um, I would say they're both the same, but I don't know. What do you guys think if you guys used it? Uh, not yet. Anybody on Zoom? No? Okay. So Quiet what? group today. What was that? Quiet group today. I know. It's so quiet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so we have the um, what do you call it? What was the same scene they had? Yeah, scene preview, and I, I was just mentioning that was almost similar to um, seeing it. Um, um, I'm sorry, this is Patrice. The one thing I would say is that again, I'm I'm not very patient, um, and when it comes to this sort of stuff, so. Be my eyes, AI. You know, if it's set to that, you just open the app and. It takes a picture and tells you a good description of what's going on. I don't have to go into the app and then go down the um, menu. But maybe, maybe there was a, is. I guess my question is: Is there a Siri short shortcut for that? Do you know? There is a Siri shortcut. I would say that honestly, it feels the same. I okay. don't. Yeah, I would say if you like Be My AI, honestly, stay with Be My AI because Siri AI. Okay. That specific picture feels very, very similar. There's also okay. some uh, world preview. Um, and Siri itself has a version, I mean, VoiceOver kind of has a version of this one. Um, although I didn't quite get the best experience of it. Maybe you guys got a better experience. And it's basically, you're kind of walking around with the camera live. And so you're kind of getting live feedback. Um, so for me, for example, I was kind of walking along the street and just kind of scanning around the neighborhood and just seeing what it was telling me. But I noticed it started to kind of fall behind with what was actually oh. going on. I've never used it yet, but... The world preview? No. I haven't either. Yeah, well, I, I don't recommend it, so... <laughs> but maybe someone else had a different experience. Uh, I don't recommend it. it it's, it still kind of needs some... I don't know, maybe it's my mobile data. Who knows? I have T-Mobile. So who knows? <laughs> yes, it's on Microsoft Spark. Yes, who knows? Um, so those are practically most of the channels on seeing AI. Um, Envision AI, let's focus on that one. Um, I did want to mention on seeing AI, I use the handwriting feature. Oh, you do? OK. Yes. I've got yeah, it works great. That's how I was able to read some Christmas cards. And it worked great. That's great. Thank you, Lori. Mm -hmm. Anyone else use it? No. And this is Holly. I'll add, I'll add to that. Actually, Lori, you prompted a thought. I, oh gosh, I was uh, on the wrong app. I'm sorry. <laughs> I flashed back to be my eyes. Um, oh, I'll just tell you now that I, um, things in the freezer. If I have written a big handwritten note that I can't read in black magic marker, but it's in like in a Ziploc with a product, I'll just take a picture of it and it reads, even with my not so great writing, it will read it. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It doesn't like my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't even write anyway, so. I make it right. And supposedly my kids say that I write pretty good, but when seeing AI reads my handwriting, it I don't know. It says I wrote something else. Yeah. <laughs> Try it with BYAI. That's what that's what um if, if, was talking about. Right. Day, it's probably gonna be just all gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Roberto, I made a boo-boo. I my brain flashed back to, to be my AI when I was talking about okay. writing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, but that, that seems to work great. Um no, I'm glad you said that, Holly. I didn't I didn't know that you could do that with it. So that's great. Thank you. It's really helped me in in you know, I'm not a Braille person so yet. Good. And it's really helped me with things in the freezer with the mystery food. Um mm -hmm. taking a picture of it is it's been amazing. I'm so grateful. 
how, how did we how did we live without these apps? How did we do that? Oh, I don't know. I Memory. <laughs> if I have to be blind, which obviously I do, I'm so glad I get to be blind in this day and age and not, yes. you know, 50, 60, 100 years ago, mm -hmm. 100 yeah. years ago, they locked up. So, right. Yeah. 10 years I, ago. They would think that you are just um, back in like 100 years ago. They would be or possessed. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I read a lot of that stuff and they thought we were possessed. So I don't know. <laughs> I think that's true. I think they were thinking about us like that. Um, I know that, you know, we kind of went over being my eyes and seeing the MA. Um, you know, feel free to, if you miss something, feel free to just, just jump in and, you know, share. Um, I know we all can come up with something. I use them on a daily basis, like I said, and sometimes I'm walking around. Once I was uh, using uh, Be My Eyes volunteer and I was looking for an address. Um, and, you know, what, what happened is I was in Live Oaks, but for whatever reason, there's this specific street in Live Oak that is split in half. There's a fence in the middle of the street. Uh -huh. I don't understand, but <laughs> there's a fence in the middle of the street splitting the street. And it looks like it was professionally done. So I don't know if the city did it or what happened, but either way, one half of the street, there's a sidewalk and the other half. There's no sidewalk, but there's still houses. So the point is, I was using Google Maps to kind of look for an address, and it told me I was in the right spot, but I needed a few hundred feet ahead. The problem is there was a fence in my way. So I was like, um, okay, this doesn't make any sense. That looks like property property because there's a fence. And so I switched over from Google Maps to be my ex you know, I called the volunteer. I said, hey, um, I'm looking for this address. And I went backwards, maybe I skipped the mailbox that uh, you know, volunteer person was helping me read mailbox by mailbox. I said, no, the address is not there. I don't know. Maybe you may want to um, skip, just jump over the fence or something. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. They told me to jump over the fence. <laughs> Sounds like a family feud to me. You stay on your side of the street, and I'm going to say on mine. <laughs> and so I don't know what just got me. I just said, you know what? So I just trailed the fence with my hands. And eventually there is an opening. Oh my gosh. Okay, whatever. I went through the opening and there's a sidewalk. I said, oh, sidewalk, okay. <laughs> sidewalk, houses. And I started walking on the street and the person on the V my eyes said, oh, there's more houses here. That doesn't make any sense. But okay, we keep going and they're like, oh, there's the address. Wow. <laughs> so that was kind of weird. Well, it's good you didn't give up. Yeah, I almost gave them. Yeah. Um, but either way, um, just yeah. kind of, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Lightwood, but they got some family disputes going on. Well, I don't know what's yeah. going on with Google Maps. I tried using it on my way here. It's and it's just... But yeah, uh, like I said, anyone if you yeah. want to share, yeah. anything yeah. unique and fancy how these apps have helped you, feel free, you know. We, it, it gives us new ideas. Yeah. 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 The things that I wanted to mention about your vision AI is that it, it has this um, ability to kind of, kind of like what Be My AI does, where you can ask it follow up questions. You can kind of do that with Envision AI, but you can do that with multiple channels. So it, you're not just able to do it with your scanning the document. You can um, ask to maybe you have a file in your, um, let's just say you receive PGE bill, for example. Well, if you receive a PG E file in your doc, um, you know, your email, they can import that file into Envision AI. And then Envision AI, you can ask the AI to tell you, oh, what's my bill set to? So this is one way I would use um, Envision AI, just kind of asking, oh, so what is my taxes on my PG and I don't know if there's an actual tax fee, but whatever. Um, it's just a question. Maybe not, not sure. And so, um, Envision AI would tell me, oh, your tax fee is, you know, $1.50 for processing, whatever. So anyway, that's just a feature that you can use on Envision AI. I feel like the AI is more inclusive into the other channels rather than just one specific channel. Um, and um, anyone want to talk about Envision AI before we jump to Orion? I, really I have a use... quick question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, honey. Um, this is Patrice. I had a quick question. 
Um, Envision AI is—is is it a free app or is it a subscription? I can't even talk. Subscription that you have to buy. It's a free app. Okay, that's great. It's Holly with a question on Envision. I I have it, but I haven't been using it, Roberto. So I'm excited to do that. Uh, which one do you prefer? Would you prefer seeing AI or Envision or uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I'll, I I will share with you guys a story on how I use all of them. It's kind of funny because one day, once upon a time, I uh, decided to take a client. Um, you know, we met up at the store, and I said, "Okay, I'm going to show you how I use Envision AI. You just follow and uh, just follow me." <laughs> so what I did is, um, first off, so I was like, okay, let's first find the store, right? So we use uh, Google Maps or, you know, um, Soundscape, and we kind of found our way there. But now we're looking for the door, Safeway has multiple doors. So um, we used Orion to find the door. We got in through the door Sweet. with Orion. Once we got in there, Orion helped us find the produce, such as bananas and apples. And so we were able to find the bananas, apples like that. Then we switched over to Be My Eyes to kind of find an Be My Eyes call volunteer to find a specific aisle. Once we find that aisle, we, we switched over to Seeing AI to do product scanning. And after we done that, you know, um, we use our back to Orion to search for text. And then we used, um, what do you call it? So we kind of just hopped over each app using Siri commands. I didn't use, you know, it was nothing manual. It was just all based Siri commands. Wow. And so that's how I had my phone set up. And this person was very like, um, I want to use, I want to know what it's like to use a smartphone. So this was a glimpse that I wanted to share with him. And mm -hmm. he said he has a hard time shopping. So I was like, okay, well, here I'm going to give him a little tour. So, so to answer your question, Holly, I love them all. I use them all. And I think they complement each other. That's a great answer and a great story. And and I want to be your client. I think we should all take a field trip with you. That would be so cool. Group shop. So, yeah, so now kind of just talking a little bit about Orion. I know some of us have not had the best um, you know, experience with it. Uh, for me, I've been having a lovely experience until iOS 18 came out. Now my Orion is broken. So um, if you have iOS 18, don't get Orion. <laughs> oh. um, it's not working for iOS 18. It's still working for iOS 17 and below. Um, what Orion can do is search for people, as the other ones can do. But what makes it stand, uh, kind of make it stand out a little bit, is that it can search for text. I know that, um, for example, I can say, hey Siri, search text with Orion. And so what that will do is it will ask me, well, what are you looking for? And I'll say Vista Center. And so I know. And oh so, my um, goodness. I'll, I can go around the Vista Center building and it's gonna keep going ding, 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 because it sees the word Vista Center multiple times around the office. <laughs> and so when I'm showing a client how to use it, they're like, oh, we found it. And I'm like, yes, I found it. Sometimes I'll invite the client to bring their mail or just a hand stack of mail. And it's like, okay, so we're going to search through this pile of mail and we're going to have a search for your specific name. Now, that's if their name is spelled generically, right? Because if their name is Natalie, but it's spelled in different ways, you know, <laughs> of course, it's not even fine. But either way, uh, for example, if we say find Natalie, it's going to search for the word Natalie. So we can go through the stack of mail and be like, nope, 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 nope. Ding, 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 ding. There you go. That mail belongs to me. I'll put it to the left and just continue scanning the rest of the mail. Um, I know they advertise as they can help you find a room number in a, at a hotel. Uh -huh. And so if you're looking for room number C5, um, you know, you'll be walking around the building and, you know, it won't say anything until it finds your room number C5. But of course, with other apps, you can do this with, you know, you can use Be My Eyes, calling a volunteer and say, like, hey, I'm looking for this. And that might be smarter to do because then you might end up being, you know, you don't know if you're going the right way or <laughs> you might be going backwards or further away from your room. So yeah, who knows? I would consider be my um, eyes to find the room or even Ira. So oh. that's that's my take on that. It's um, creepy. 
pay for it as well. Yeah, I it is true. I write you do have to pay, but uh, I think there are some benefits to that if anyone has used uh, IRA and anyone wants to speak on IRA's behalf, oh, IRA's experience. <laughs> Should I tell them that, Patty? <laughs> Oh. When I first got my remote, yes, Levy, please tell them. <laughs> <laughs> when I first got Ira, um, Patty and I used to walk a lot, and usually we end up at a dress shop or Starbucks or whatever. Um, <laughs> and we don't, we didn't want to go the long way around and coming home, and we wanted to go the shortcut, which is walking through a parking lot. And you all know that we shouldn't be with guide dogs. <laughs> with guide dogs. With guide dogs. So um, I called Ira, and with Ira, they were able to guide us all the way, safely to the side of the parking lot, all the way down to where the sidewalk got. We could connect with that sidewalk and say bye bye to Ira and head for home. So it was really quite pleasing. Another thing that's a little on the odd side, but um, when I had my guide dog, I also would use it to try to help me pick up after my dog sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, please find my dog's poop. I love it. <laughs> so I has really, you know, I, 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 I pay, I continue paying even if I don't, um, like, like the other day I was trying to find something that I was looking at and the different apps that I was using the AI ones didn't work. So I called Ira and, um, I just, I really like them as a backup on my phone. It's worth the 20 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're an insurance policy. They are. <laughs> That's what yeah. I think of that. I think of that payment every month. Is you it, you know, in a, in a jam, I've got it. Right. Is it true um, that Ira is bonded as opposed to Be My Eyes? Like if you needed to look at something like a credit card mm -hmm. number? It is true. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wrote, um, you can, and I've had them do it before, read a credit card number. Um, and so they can, it, it, your your stuff is safe with them. Okay. I wouldn't well, give that to them. I was, I was nervous at first. I, 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 same here. I would get nervous about personal information. Like if you're looking for a birth certificate or a social security card or Medi-Cal ID or your you know, state ID, government issued ID. Any confidential information like that, it does feel a bit um, uncomfortable to share it on me, my eyes. Yeah. It's really true. Yeah. So, but is, um, it, is it true, though, that if you use seeing AI to look at your credit card number or something like that, it doesn't go anywhere? It is true. Uh, it's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But can seeing AI read a credit card number? I didn't, I've never yes. tried Yes, it has. It has. Right. Um, the one thing else that I wanted to mention that I use seeing AI for, and also my husband, um, when our computers, anytime we've used it for years with older computers and everything, but when something like say the voice stops talking and you're like, what happened? <laughs> I use my seeing AI app to get, tell me what's on the screen. And then from my, my memory, I can figure out, well, what I need to do to shut it down and restart it just by using seeing AI to read me what's on the screen. Yeah, that, that is good. Um, I do know that Be My Eyes has a app for computers as well. So uh -huh. if you're using your computer, you can install Be My Eyes. And if you take a screenshot, Be My Eyes will tell you um, what you kind of need to know. It'll break it down by window and by tab. So that's uh -huh. another thing. If you want to try it out, so oh, what do you okay. do? It's only for so, Windows. Yeah, you can download and install Be My Eyes on your computer. And okay. It, An app that you just install it you on your computer. Uh huh. Oh, on yeah. Windows, yes. Oh, well, does it work on that? No, no, it does not work on that yet. Oh well, then never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I have one too. <laughs> um. But you know, uh, there's there's other options. Siri does uh, kind of have its own little built-in. Not Siri. Voiceover does have its own built-in um, picture description. I say it does decently. Um, yes or no? In your opinion, what do you think, Juan? My opinion is I think it does decently. 
Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. So, yeah, so there, there you go. You got um, voiceover that can kind of give you a description of um, what do you call it? Screenshots. In this description, it's called that. Yeah, so that's another option if you use it. But VMIX has its own app for computers. So, um, I don't know who meant was that you, Lori, that was kind of bringing that up? Yes. Yeah, so that, that's an idea to look into. Okay. I had one quick thing, a story. When I first got Be My Eyes put on my iPhone, the first thing I did was I went outside my front door, turned around, took a picture, and it told me the whole description of my front door and the porch. And, and it says, and you have a paper sticking out underneath your doormat. And I'm like, I do? <laughs> so I went and got it, and I wow. read it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I wouldn't even know that was there. <laughs> Right. The, the, yeah, that's, um, I know that for us, for example, um, you know, we'll sometimes use Be My Eyes to see if there's a stain on our shirts, right? So, you know, we're visually impaired. So my wife and I are both visually impaired. We, you know, we struggle to see. So when we, um, when we're sometimes washing and we're doubting, you know, we'll just take a picture with Be My AI and see if it tells us that there's a stain and it does work. Mm -hmm. it, that's neat. <laughs> Yeah, that's all. So there's a stain. Um, I think someone mentioned that the, that's how the food is moldy at times. Whoa! Well, so that's good. That's yeah, important. That is helpful. That's nice to know. But I told you though, but it's awful that the food is full, moldy. Um, they yeah. told me my garage floor was messy. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. And I think it helps with a lot with designs too. Like when you're trying to take pictures of like gift bags and you're trying to choose a gift bag, you know, like you're in doubt. So, you know, you don't know which one to choose. So, you know, pull out your AI app and just have it describe, ooh, and you know, I wonder which gift bag would be perfect. And that so, is great ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, so these are some of the apps that we use. There's uh, There's more. I don't know if we want to go through all of them. Uh, we'll be here all day, but there's something called Pixie Box. Has anyone had experience that? No. no. What's it called? Pixie Bot. Oh. P I C C Y B O T. Pixie Bot. Okay. Um, so Pixie Bot gives you a description of videos, and so what happens is you can feed Pixie Bot um, a let's just say a video on your phone, and so you can feed it. A video export video into your um, this box app, and so what it does is it'll describe. Now I, I want to tell you guys that it will do its best to pump, give you a boost of energy because I know this is uses a lot of positive words, <laughs> and I feel like it overdoes it. But either way, it describes movies, videos, um, clips, photos, so it kind of does all that, but just it goes a little extra mile and just makes sure to include every detail that it thinks would be important. So oh. I think that's a bit more than be my eyes. Um, so that's if you want that. Um, we use it to like maybe so a family member shares a video and we don't know what's going on. We're like, what's going on in this video? You know, in group chats or something like that. And we want to be involved. Well, you can feed that video into Pixiebot and it'll describe what's going on. That's great. So uh Roberto, could you spell that out again? I didn't get it and I want to write it down. This is Hannah, by the way. Hello, Hannah. Hi. So that, that is uh, P I C. P for Papa. Yes, P for Papa, I for Island, C yep. for Carrot, yep. C for Carrot, Y yep. for Yogurt, Space, yep. Bob, B for Boy, O for October, T for Tiger. My robot. Thank you. Yeah. That sounds really useful. Yeah, if you guys ever want the best experience when you're using these apps, I would also recommend connect to the store's web but if they have it. Connect to the... Connect to the, like, um, Wi-Fi at the store, like Target, Safeway. Usually they typically have Wi-Fi available. And so when you're using these AI apps, you get a better experience when you connect it to their Wi-Fi. Costco, I think, has Wi-Fi too. You can connect to them. No, it's for guests. Uh, but I have, would it work with, like, I have unlimited data, so would it pick? But 
so what happens is since the signal gets throttled, and so like when you're using product scanner on CNAI and you're scanning, you know, items on the shelf, um, it may take, you know, a few seconds to connect to your mobile data. Mm -hmm. But with the store Wi-Fi, typically, it does it instantly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I, mm -hmm. I, I know that for me, um, when I want fast results, I want beat my eyes to give me a result within seconds, not within, you know, 30 seconds later. I want it now. I'm not patient either. Um, I'm not patient either. <laughs> yeah. So I will um, give me my eyes to kind of take a picture of the store or something like that of the shelf and then tell me more or less within a second or something. So connect to the store Wi-Fi and you get a better signal. Or if you're on the bus, if you would like to ride the bus, connect to the bus Wi-Fi too. You know, that wait, 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 what? The bus has your Wi-Fi? I'll find out later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Okay. I have a question about yep. connecting to Wi-Fi at a store or a bus or anywhere else. Do you just make sure you're only using that particular app and make sure that you don't have any other? I, I didn't know how Wi-Fi could get anything else off of your phone. So, um, yes, I, you, you know, there's always this um, policy. I mean, I guess like practice that just means don't share confidential information while you're on public Wi-Fi. Right. Um, like if you're scanning products, it's not really a big deal because- Oh, okay, okay. Um, I didn't know the bus had Wi-Fi. That's <laughs> yeah, so the Santa Cruz buses have Wi-Fi on them and you can connect to them and use them. So back to PixieBot, is Holly here. Um, could you please describe the process for doing a video for example if our, our family sends us a video through a text message how would i get it from there to run it through a pixie bot just you know good question holly there are so on pixie bot there are tabs at the bottom and these tabs kind of like the channels um it will ask for permission to your camera roll or video role. So there's a tab for videos and a tab for cam uh, photos. And so once you give it grants a permission, um, all your photos and videos will appear. Um, and then um, you can double tap on one of the videos that you would like it to uh, give you a description of. It's going to take a minute to kind of scan the whole entire, the entirety of your video. So just give it a minute to scan it, depending how long your video is. It'll take a, uh, you know, a bit longer. But if you are doing it from social media, then you would want to download the video into your, um, you know, you want to download the video. And then from there, um, hopefully it's in your camera roll by then. And from PixieBot, you should be able to see it. Okay. So if it's in a text message, uh, where would I, would I, how would I get it into my, do I need to get it into my camera roll first or do I open PixieBot or I'm, I'm kind of confused about the process. So there are two ways you can do it from there. One of them would be if you double, if you select the video, you, there is a share button. Um, once you select that share button, you'll be able to export that video to Pixie Box. Oh, perfect. Oh, okay. um, yeah. That would be one way of doing it. Just keep, once again, just give it a minute or two to kind of process the video. And after that, it should be able to, you know, it'll tell you, oh, okay, I'll give you a description. So that is what we're doing it. The other way, as you mentioned, is downloading it from your messages. So once again, you double tap to open up the video, and then there should be a save button. Yeah. Okay. Right. Wow. That, that it sounds it sounds really easy because that's how what I do with the uh, the photo uh, photographs that the family send through a text message. It says image. And then I do, I find the share sheet and, and share it through, uh, describe with Be My Eyes. And it does an incredible job of giving detail that people don't even see with their, their, their real eyes. And then I share it back to them to let them know what the picture really looked like. So it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like I could do sort of the same thing with videos. Yes. Do you share it with Be My Eyes? I do. I choose, um, I, get, I go to share the the picture the image mm -hmm. I do share uh, and then way down for me it's described with be my eyes and I put it there and it says please wait it oh, wow. gives me a description 
And then I think I use, I think I flick up to do, um, I don't remember the different exact steps, but basically I copy it and then I close that out and then I copy it and send it back into the text message and send it back to, you know, the family members with the, the description. They, they love it. They see things that they never would have seen with their own eyes. So um, that'll be fun to work with. Video. <laughs> yeah, well, they be fun. okay. We're we've got we we we're gonna have to play. We get to play. Mm -hmm. get to yeah. play. There's a, there's another option, Holly. I don't know if you want to try this too. With seeing the eye, if you add the faces, you know, if you kind of put a name to each face. So, for example, brother brother Samuel, sister. Um, Mary, right? And if you feed that same picture, and let's just say Brother Samuel and Sister Mary are in the picture, seeing AI will kind of do it by name of person. So it'll describe the picture, but with the names included. And it'll say, oh, Samuel sitting on a, um, next to a Christmas tree, and oh, Sister Mary is standing next to the Christmas tree to the right. So, so yeah, that's another tool. Well, um, thank you. I've been wanting to do that. I have not put any names to faces uh, in my phone. And do I do that through seeing AI? Did you say? Yes, because seeing AI doesn't share its data with the other apps. It keeps it to itself. And so even if you were to name it in your um, Apple library, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't know. Huh. Okay. If I had them um, identified in my in my phone, say in camera or wherever, whatever that place is, would that then transfer over to be my eyes? Would be my eyes identify people? Um, not that I know uh, know of. Okay. Okay. We've got things to explore, Holly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, and I think there, I forgot the name of this other app where it kind of focuses specifically on drawings. And so what it does is, um, I think you guys saw, I don't know if you guys saw, there was an email that was sent out to um, um, Vista and basically it was a research team trying to improve their app where they were trying to um, have us being able to enjoy art. And so, you know, art drawn, drawn by family members. And so me and my daughter conducted this research. And so my daughter drew a picture and my son. And so um, our once our kids were done drawing, the AI would basically describe. So it does kind of like what Be My Eyes does, Be My AI does. But it went so far in intense that I felt like I was right there with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I loved it, the way it described it. My daughter loved it. She's like, yeah, this makes me feel like my dad can actually see how hard oh, I tried on this awesome. picture. So it was a beautiful experience, and I, you know, I thank the company for, for the university for building this app. Um, but I do want to share that app with you guys if you guys are interested. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a beta test or what? What's that? Is it like a beta test? Yeah, it's a beta testing. It's uh, coming out soon, but either way, that. Um, hopefully, Pixie Bot doesn't see where they're, you know, they're hard working. <laughs> but uh, Pixie Bot, just so you guys know, for whatever reason, they have a little tiny um, ad. They have ads. I don't know. <laughs> just ignore them. Mm -hmm. um, anyone have any other questions or stories, anything like that, or anyone wants support in setting any of these things up? Feel free. I'm here to help you guys set up any of these yeah. up so you can set up. Them. I do have I do have a question. Um, hi, Brett. You know, um, hi. <laughs> I've been mm -hmm. listening this whole time. It's been great. Um, I am, you know, starting to research the um, the Ray Ban. I get made glasses, mm -hmm. um, those three hundred dollar glasses. And what I'm wondering is, are these glasses compatible with all these uh, these apps you're talking about? In the sense of where the camera on the, the 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 glasses can be used instead of holding your phone and scanning a document, holding your phone and saying what product am I looking at, holding your phone and doing a bargain. Can you choose the camera inside the glasses to be 
as the camera inside your phone. So you can have your phone in your pocket. You can open up Seeing AI and, and just it, it'll use the camera on the glasses. Do you know if that is compatible with all these apps, these glasses? No, not yet. Um, I do know that, um, you know, Be My Eyes have announced officially that they will be working with Meta. Yeah, that's right. So they, that's official. I do know that Ira is also working with Meta. That's right. Yeah. Um, okay. So you will be able to use Ira and Be My Eyes. Um, but it, I hope it depends on what purpose you're using the Meta glasses because the battery will only last two hours of usage. So. I hope it's not something you're, you know, trying to use on, you know, on good. Only models. two hours? Oh, I didn't realize it was that little. I thought it was like well, six hours. But then you can put it in its case. Yes. And it, and it charges fast, and it charges, I think, eight times in the case, and then you and then you charge the case. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's meant like. Um, not like for hardcore use, but a good, uh, you know, uh, quick use is like, oh, I'm going to go to the, you know, um, I mean, it's for average use, but yeah, it, it's a good pair of glasses. I know there's still some compatibility, accessibility issues on it, but, you know, uh, they do, they did heavily invest in making it more accessible. This is mm -hmm. Lori and um, the Echo Vision glasses that will be coming out in the spring will be working with all of these apps. Hmm. Echo vision glasses. I haven't even heard of those. Yeah. No. Um, um, Carrie, maybe... um, oh, yeah. Carrie accessibility that on YouTube, Carrie accessibility, carry on access does a, a, about a 40 minute video with the developers and it's, it's awesome. It's, it's what's the YouTube channel called again? Carry on accessibility. I'm not oh, sure. I think it's spelled with a C. Okay. I like your channel. That's one pretty good problem. Um, this is Patrice. I wanted to say that uh, Morgan at Vista did a great demonstration of the Meta glasses, and that should be on the Vista YouTube channel. Um, she just did it uh, well at the beginning of the month. I think it was yeah. you know October sixth. But she was using both Hey Meta, and then I think she was, and I think she was using her Google phone. She goes back and forth um, and you know she was saying hey Google and Google was responding but she wasn't taking it out of her pocket you know it so I think I think that is possible Brett but you might want to check that out um, or even you know I don't know what your experience is mm -hmm. with this also Roberto but um, she she uses them all the time so she might have an answer she was using it to read signs across the room. She was using it mm -hmm. to read flyers that they handed her. She was using it for currency and coin identification. Coin, it was a little iffy, but currency, it did an okay job on. And it mm -hmm. does work mm -hmm. with some of these apps. Um, I'd have and to These go are the Ray-Ban Meta glasses you're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. And, oh, okay. The, and the Ray-Ban Meta glasses are relatively inexpensive compared to any of this other technology. Oh, I know. <laughs> Yep. Um, so how do where do I go watch this video of this woman doing the demonstration? It's on. It, it's not. It, it's not posted there yet. Oh, sorry. Oh, about it. It'll it'll be on the Vista YouTube channel. Uh, and and, and like the that. woman is. Um, I wanted to say the woman. This is Patrice again. That is Morgan Pimentel, and she is one of our access technology team. And Roberto, I don't know if you use these or not. I'm just, I was just referring to the check it out. Um, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were, um, we were testing, you know, we were trying them out. Mm -hmm. uh, we, me and Morgan, we work closely to make sure uh, I, I, we give each other feedback and help each other on projects like these. Um, Great. But, yeah. Yay. I love collaboration. <laughs> it is, uh, me, so, Bob. Go ahead, Brett. So, Brett, is that the, yeah, so Bob, um, can I ask you, can I ask Bob a quick question? Do you know when that, that video will be available on the Business Center site? Um, I have to talk with Ryan Lynn. He, um, since, it, since the, it was a live demonstration done in San Jose, I, I didn't record that. Check it out. It was recorded by the San Jose office. And so they've got mm -hmm. to post, they have to post it and they haven't um, had an opportunity to do that yet. 
Oh, okay. If you if if you if you go to the Vista Center YouTube channel and go mm -hmm. to playlists and click on mm -hmm. check it out with Vista. And by the way, also under playlists are these tips and tricks videos. They're they're all listed there on the YouTube channel. But if you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you click the little bell, it'll send you uh, a notice each time a new video is posted. So that so I'll know right away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Check out the Wi Fi, the bus Wi Fi. Oh. <laughs> you can tell us next time. <laughs> Bond is leaving us, so that's why um, he's currently leaving right now. But. Bye. 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 Yeah, he would miss his bus if he didn't leave now. Oh. Um, Brad, did you want to know again what Lori's site, the YouTube channel Lori was talking about also? Uh, sure, yeah. Carry on. So Lori, could you say that again? It's carry on accessibility. Okay, and I yeah, believe it's yeah. a C. Oh. Okay. And, and um, Brett, if you're interested in the Ray-Bans, uh, I've heard um, from one of our clients that the best place to acquire them is to go to the Ray-Ban store slash kiosk in the... Uh, uh, Valley Fair Mall, the old Valley Fair Mall on Stevens Street uh -huh. Boulevard. They're they're very um, they're trained very well in in the glasses. They'll help you download the app. They'll get it installed. They'll make sure that um, you can do everything you want to do with the glasses, and you can try on all the different models of glasses there, and ultimately pick out the the style that you like the best, and then they'll they'll help you set it all up. We're all oh, on Thanks, trying Brett. to get a ride over there, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go over together. <laughs> yeah. So, all, like six, six of us will be walking out with cool glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> How about seven? I'm in on this. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly wait. Bob, where is yes. that mall? It's the Valley Fair Mall on Steve, uh, yeah, Stevens, Stevens Creek Street. Boulevard in San Jose. San Jose. I think it's called Westgate now, isn't it? Westfield. Westfield. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it's called Westfield slash Valley Fair. It's yeah. at the. It's basically at the intersection of 880 and Stevens Creek Boulevard. Thank you. And it's we a could, Ray-Ban store, right? We could all Ray go together store. and um, get our glasses and walk out and have somebody take a picture with us. And, and <laughs> 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 we could use it as an advertisement. <laughs> yeah. well, I love it that per I love it that Perla got the rose-colored glasses. I think yeah. that's apropos. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to say that I I don't know if this is going to happen in any timely way. This is Patrice again, but. Um, Sophia was looking into seeing if uh, a, a representative could actually come to Vista since there are so many of us who are interested in this. But I don't know, you know, timing wise, if that if that's going to um, um, be something you want to wait for to it, get your glasses. Uh, it, it, but it, it is in the in the works. Could I, they bring all the models and all that sort of thing. You know? I, Patrice, I don't know if she was talking about Ray-Ban. She was talking about that other company who was at the um, oh, the business okay. fair. It's both. it's both, Bob, because um, she does have that other company coming. And then um, Patrice put a request in that she would get a hold of Ray Dan also. And so she's um, planning on doing that too. Okay. Yeah, but it's I, a matter of waiting around till that happens. And it, not that she isn't doing it, but, you know, it's a matter of, yeah. you know. Okay. Right. Definitely. And I can confirm that we are working on it. <laughs> and Roberto says he confirms that. <laughs> <laughs> I might just have to buy them and then, uh, you know, just bring them in. Say, here you guys go. <laughs> right. You were saying about, this is Pat. You were saying about, is it Echo Glasses that are coming out in the spring? Echo Vision. Echo Vision? From Magiga, A-G-I-G-A. 
and what and tell me a little bit more about that um well they're going to work with all the apps they're going to have uh, microphones camera button you can put your prescription lenses in them um, they give a very detailed description and there's going uh the the two people that are the head engineers the one worked for developed with the echo devices and she has done um, for 50 years extensive technology and um, the other guy was from Google so she he has anyway they've developed this with blind people in mind so they're not taking it from another kind of glass it's specifically made for the blind by the blind because there's a group of 200 blind people that have been using this mm -hmm. and they you can they just started their pre-order and both my husband and I did the pre-order so we're going to be getting them when it comes out and then we get to also have feedback and get free upgrades and everything down the road so from my, all my research I decided we decided my husband and I to go with these glasses because there's there's quite a bit of technology and design um, put in specifically just for blind people. So mm. that's the only reason we're going with them because we want the, the abilities of all the, it, it does a lot of things. It will read a complete book or a document. It does scenery. Mm. It does all kinds. It does, and it works with all these apps. They're integrating all the apps into the glasses. And what is the cost of those? It's a, a pre-order is $99. The normal price would be like 500 and something, but when you do the pre-order, you get a discount. And so when they come out, they're about four, I think uh, 439 total. Do you Ooh. know if the battery life is any better? Uh, I don't remember what she said, but they're trying to make it long and they have a glass case, a glasses case that has a charger in the glasses case. So I don't, you know, they're still in the works. So they're saying second quarter of 2025. I did, I watched a video on um, the Meta and he was saying you can get up to six hours on them if you're not using them continuously, if you're just exactly. in and out. Yeah. Um, I was to suggest for any of these apps, you know, they'll drain the, it's mainly the powering up the camera that really sucks up the power. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. More than anything, it's that camera, just keeping it ongoing. And so for me, for example, when I'm using my smartphone to kind of use any of these apps, I notice my phone will drain out pretty good. So my suggestion is, I think it's time to invest into uh, some type of portable bank, bank, bank uh, mm -hmm. power bank is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's time to invest in one. Uh, you know, anything 10,000 milliamps would be pretty good, you know, or maybe 20,000 if you think you're going to be going pretty wild. But um, power banks are pretty good. I got one myself and I use it on the go because um, charging all these devices that I carry around with me, they, um, you know, they, just, they get drained out. Right. Can you but, recommend one that's accessible? Uh, a power bank? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, most as far as accessibility what do you mean by that that you're able to know how much charge or if the the chart the bank is fully charged and ready to go the one i got doesn't uh announce anything but if you were to use maybe one of your ai apps you probably it's just a number it'll tell you percentage wise it'll say 67 and I, i'm assuming that be my eyes will be able to read that or see the AI. Oh, okay um, yeah um and it's pretty, the one I have, it's pretty easy to carry around, but it's just 10,000 milliamps. Is it lightweight? It's uh, about the same weight of my phone, if not maybe lighter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's the same size, maybe, I think it's a little bit shorter. Um, so it's a bit more smaller than my iPhone 13 Pro Max, just to make sure that you guys know that. What's the okay. name? I got an Anchor one. I, I don't remember the name, I just want yeah. some Anchor portable. Power bank, but um, uh, it's going to be important to me carry one of those around with smart glasses. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, whichever one you guys go with, because you know we got vision, we got the arm, we got the other glasses. I think there's like five competitors. And visions is real expensive. It, it yeah. is. Yeah, like eighteen hundred, I think. I, and I heard Apple's going to be coming out with a pair too. 
Not not the one not the one they already are out with. That that one did that one kind of dead it right. sounds like. But um they're supposed to be coming out with another pair. Yeah, I think Envision needs to uh, <laughs> do something about that because theirs is 1800. I do know that Envision also can give you a quick tutorial. You can schedule a tutorial with Envision and they'll give you a 30 minute session where they'll just kind of guide you. And um, it's a virtual tutorial. So using the Envision app, you can schedule an appointment. With Isn't it three or $4,000? They dropped the price down. Oh, they did? Oh, they did because yeah. it used to be 3000 <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, now now they're going starting at fifteen hundred, so it's still pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. But I think well, for those who have um, DOR, there's a DOR can um, purchase that for them. Unfortunately, with Meta, DOR does not um, pay for those, which would be good, but um, that's still not a thing yet. Well, I think the reason why Meta is um, a better price is because it wasn't made for the blind; it was made for sighted people. So there's, you know, they have more people to sell it to except for just us, so they can leave the price lower. Yes. I was thinking of getting my, my wife's not here, so I was thinking of getting her. She's a Facebook user and an Instagram user, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get her a rose, now that someone said there's a rosebud color. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I might rose just get her a rosebud color for her for her for Christmas. Awesome. I was awesome. wearing rose powder glasses when I met my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, so I'm not getting that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else have um questions about you know any of these apps that we've been using? Uh, I know that we we all kind of shared a story. But uh, anyone else want to say something? I haven't heard anything um, from Bob. Bob's a big tech user, but go for it, Patrice. I was just going to say that um, there is um, on AppleVis, there's a new, um, uh, what new, you know, um, uh, podcast, uh -huh. and it is um, about the Meta Glasses. And it's a guy, I think this guy, I think you can see, or you can see some stuff. You know, he says, I can't see without my glasses, but you know how excited people say that, but they don't really mean it um, or they don't really understand it, I should say. But he um, he it's a nice demonstration to go along with others. So, uh, Brett, you might want to check that out. It's on AppleVis on the podcast. Great. Um, it's called you Apple. Use I'm sorry. What do you, what do you oh, say? AppleVis Apple is this? it's it's yes, it's a um, it's sort of the, after Apple. Can you spell Apple, the, the, and the you end? continue on. It's all one word. V is in Victor. I is in. Mm -hmm. um, I am beautiful, and um, S as <laughs> in Santa. So it's oh, just this. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. the first syllable of vision, and vision. Um, yeah, okay. it, it's a vision. podcast. You, it's a it's a free podcast, and uh -huh. um, it's it's all about. Um, what's nice is it's an Apple podcast about Meta glasses. So, um, okay. yeah, and he, he shows you how he you can sort of use them, but it definitely was, was helpful to me, at, you know, to understand how they worked mm -hmm. too, even if he's mm -hmm. using them from a visual point of view. Yeah. Okay, good. One thing I would mention, um, I don't know if you did listen to a recent Blind Abilities podcast, but uh, Be My Eyes just announced their partnership with the Hilton Hotel chain. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And and so all of the, I can't remember all the ones that are fi are affiliated with Hilton, but there's an awful lot of them. Oh, uh, your be my eyes um, app uh, can help you with customer service in inside the individual properties that you're staying at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. Bl that's blind abilities is the name of the podcast. All right. Mm -hmm. They, they're also in the service directory of Be My Eyes. And so if you call, uh, if you go to the Be My Eyes app and then you select service directory, you'll, you'll find Hilton uh, as one of the options. And then from there, you'll be able to call them right away and that your camera will get pulled up and they can uh, give, give you some guidance. So um, they they are part of the service. Uh, one great. of the services there. That's great. Yeah, I haven't quite exper uh, done much with that, but uh, I hope to hear more from you guys about those kinds of things because they'll help me keep sharing with these clients. Um, 
I know that Bevy sent me a service directory also. And I know Bob sent me uh, a few places that he follows. Um, and you know, all of these are helping me just also keep in, you know, keep up with you, um, all the things that can be helpful. Because trust me, there's no way I can auto. There mm -hmm. isn't. That's I so learned, good about tips and tricks. Yeah, I learned from you guys. We learned from each other. Okay. I love it. Um, yeah. We have a really nice close community here and we are moving forward together. Yeah. We are not going back. Amen, brother. <laughs> You've never heard that before. <laughs> well, well, I, I, as you guys mentioned, I'm not sure how we did it prior to this. It feels like it was just yesterday we didn't have all these apps. And um, I don't know. I, I have no idea. <laughs> we did it. I just don't know how we did it. I think it was all those portable video magnifiers that had OCR. Yeah, yeah. And um, and memorization, yeah. You know, I mean, luckily I did it for a living. You know, memorizing opera scores and everything else. So my mind was um, already tuned to that. But yeah, having to memorize phone numbers. I used to know so many phone numbers. Me it was too. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't have to know them any longer. So now I don't know any of them. It's so amazing. I you can also. It, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just you just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this is, uh, I think, um, you know, from just my experience, when I'm out doing intakes, um, I can just see this, uh, this program growing so much because everybody's interested and it doesn't have to do necessarily with the young people. All people now have um, a smartphone or if they're not, they're making a transition. Mm -hmm. uh, because I like the features of being able to just make a phone call without having to see the numbers. Right. Um, so I'm always, I think, pretty much uh, most all clients that I see now, I'm referring to Roberto. So I, I'm thinking this is going to just keep growing. That's great. Right. Um, yeah. Next month, we're going to be talking about shopping. Yay! Because it's right before Christmas. <laughs> I want you to talk about Walmart. <laughs> um, I'll have Eric come to that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all the different ways that we can get help with shopping and, you know, different websites that we've experienced, all of us and stuff like that. Yeah, you and know, then, um, when I shop with Amazon, finance. <laughs> when, I, I, when I shop with Amazon, I always seem to get like the same item in my cart four times. And, you know, and then luckily now it says, do you really want four of these? And I think, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I either call the lady or I <laughs> try to handle it myself. But it's, yeah, I don't know what it is about you know, some of these apps. I just... I panic and I hit every button. So I'm really looking forward to it because I am definitely dingo when it comes to shopping using this technology. Bring it on. <laughs> I want to thank, thank everybody you. very much. This is most informative. Wow. I don't know who I'm most in awe of, but I've got lots to learn and lots to try out. So thank you all, especially Roberto. Yay. Yay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Hi, Hannah. Hi. We should we, we gotta talk about DoorDash too, and Uber Eats and um you know some of those Instacart. <laughs> okay. Now that you guys are talking about shopping, right. that could well, be its own separate thing. Well that's what I wanted to say to Anna because in, in your social work and going out to people every month um we'll have something different to talk about. You know, we've had labeling and um we've had instant pot and uh what do you, uh, Bob, what do you use? The, uh, air fryer. Air fryer. And, mm -hmm. um, so there's everything we can think of to talk about. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I want Do DoorDash, please, DoorDash. when we do the shopping. And, 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 oh, <laughs> when we do the shopping. I don't know DoorDash. I don't know that either. See? Slip it in. We're shopping for food. <laughs> exactly. We can do and a whole they new. deliver it. Yeah, and Instacart too. I know that Holly has shopped for um, Instacart. Instacart, Walmart shopping. I do. Yeah. Target Ship. Well, that company is separate called Ship. Oh yeah. Okay. See.
bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to learn a lot on shopping day, it sounds like. You know? I know. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, honestly, we're going to need more money. <laughs> I guess I better start practicing. <laughs> right. Yeah, you better practice so you have intelligent questions. That's right. Go, go uh, conquer. I wanted to offer the finance tips and tricks first, but I got vetoed and she wanted shopping first. It's oh, buy first and worry about right. finances second. Exactly. Yeah. Who wants to talk about finances at Christmas time? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we'll, we need we'll to shop. Ready. We need to shop ahead and then do the finances later. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of your mind um, later. That's the American also, way. <laughs> All right. Also, I want to remind everybody that if you have any ideas um, of things that you know you'd like to talk about, please tell us, and you know we'll get them on the list. And because that's how we're going to continue to keep going is for everybody to participate in things that you know things that they want to talk about so mm -hmm. learn about i want to say a big thank you to bevy because i believe this was your brainchild I'm, uh, <laughs> and it, it's been amazing i love my grandchildren but um thank you pat i do have to say as every time it was the name of it the idea was actually Patrice's husband's idea, and I picked it up and ran. So, yeah. Well, you did a good job running. Yes. <laughs> and I think having it on YouTube is an excellent resource. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, we can yeah. Check out quick, now. What was the name of that website little, again? Go ahead. Brett. I got a quick little blind thing that just happened to me. Um, I reached down, I put my face down to my phone to unmute, and my nose hit the end call button. <laughs> so I had to call back in, go upstairs, zoom in on my computer to find out what the, the passcode was, the password, the meeting ID. I mean, it was just like, oh my, oh my gosh. So, um, but I had <laughs> What other group Roberto. of people would what other group of people would laugh at you about that, Brett? Most people are like, oh, I'm exactly. so sorry. <laughs> You're like, I got so close to my phone that my nose <laughs> says end call button. Yeah. I can totally identify. Um, <laughs> you, you might have hanged up with your cheeks in the past then. <laughs> yeah. So, Roberto, I know we have like about 10 minutes left or so, but um, or 15. Um, are you able to talk about, I, I'm, well, I'm really interested, maybe this is a future topic, but it's about um, like Google Maps and being able to learn, you know, like tell myself, I need to go to the Capitola Mall, you know, um, and the bus that's near my house is the bus 71, you know, which is like finding out how to do, you know, is there a way that, or, or app that says, oh, Bus 71 comes to this stop at this time, you know, and you know what would we guide do, you to that or, I mean, is there, what's that? You know what we should do? We mm -hmm. should merge, what? What? merge tips and tricks with Owen and Walk and go on a trip and we'll do everything that we just talked about with Envision AI, Seeing AI, Google, just, just start at some location, tell, you know, all mm -hmm. through remote control. Answer. But that's going to be hard for the people like Lori lives in Idaho. Oh. <laughs> and, you know what would it's be good? It's probably only a 22 hour bus ride. Yeah. <laughs> you know what would be good though is to go through those apps. What I've tried to do with those apps, if there was a place I wanted to go to and I didn't know how far or what the directions were, I would try to see. I know there's different apps that you can use for navigation. But to be able to plan your route and know what streets you're going to be taking if you're walking or if there's public transfer, you know, the way to plan something and actually route it out ahead of time so you know what you're doing. I forgot to mention, Oko. Mm -hmm. um, now that you mentioned that, Lori, um, there's Oko and Soundscape. Soundscape has a different name, but anyway, um, those two apps mm -hmm. uh, together or even, you know, with Google Maps or Apple Maps, whichever you prefer. Um, they kind of help you with that stuff. And I didn't really quite mention them, mainly because they kind of play a different role with AI. Um, oh, okay. 
But Boko will basically kind of guide you along sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And it also, what it does is it can tell you when a pedestrian has a cross signal and a non cross signal. Um, so, you know, like a, you know, wait or then a signal to cross. So, Boko has those built in features. Can you spell, How do you spell that? Okay. -O. <laughs> Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 That's a great app because, yeah. Yeah. So that was a good app. The same when um, I w I was trying to cross the street in my neighborhood um that didn't have the talking beeping you know, uh, signal uh, thing on it, and it was a, it's uh, down at Brennan and Freedom. It's like a four way stop. It's a, it's oh, a it's large dangerous. street to cross. Yeah. So I called the city and I was like, you know, what, what is it? Because I see these talking, you know, uh, signals all over the place. But like, why wasn't there one at this intersection? And the guy called me back and he said, you know, the reason those those um, other ones are there is because the, of, of the state. The state funds these certain areas and these certain signals, which is the rest of these stoplights that we deal with are, you know, in this from the city. And they cost a, a, a minimum of forty thousand dollars to put oh. those oh censored, you know, um, you know, talking crosswalk things, you know. But anyway, in in sharing this in one of my my peer groups with with Debbie, um, our friend Elizabeth said, "Oh, there's an Oco nap that tells you when the walk signal's on and when the walk signal's off, and tells you when you can cross the street or when you can't." You know, and so I downloaded the app and I, I tested it out and it works great. But just, you know, you just go to the, you know, you can't see the signal across the street. You just hold your phone up towards towards it and it does like a beep, beep, beep. And it says, oh, you know, okay to cross. Or it's like, you know. Oh, great. Just, uh, yeah. That's so, really cool. And Kalani is going to keep this in the crosswalk so we can cross any street. And Yeah. And, oh, that's right. And Brett. Uh, if you talk to the city again, um, tell them you're mm -hmm. requesting that they put those talking signals in under ADA requirements. Mm -hmm. um, the, mm -hmm. They they set aside hundreds of thousands of dollars each year to do ADA upgrades, mm -hmm. and they do them where they're requested. So they they just don't really? go through every signal because okay. blind people aren't crossing everywhere. But if if you bug them, yeah, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll put they'll put it on the list and get it done. Hey, yeah, that's oh, what so we I did say, at, I, on I want, I want a signal. Oh, okay. Did you say I want a signal put in under the ADA requirements? Is that what you yep. Said, you want them to upgrade that those traffic signals to ADA requirements so that you can cross safely as a blind person. Okay. Yeah, so um, Brent, I'm going to make that call. <laughs> since you mentioned that, Brent, uh, it's funny because I, I was speaking to Caltrans and I um, you know, got them to push the ones at Crestview and um, Freedom, um, but they're gone again. Uh, I don't know, someone else pushed and now they're somewhere else. I don't know who took my... <laughs> someone took them, now there's different ones there, so who knows what happened to them. Um, they still work, yeah. you know, it's back to making um, chirpy noises. I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, who took these pedestrian signals? <laughs> But either way, they get, I know that sometimes they get swapped around or something, who knows, maybe one breaks. But um, I do also do that, you know, I call for Watson, I'm like, hey, where are these <laughs> pedestrian signals? But yeah, let's keep bugging them, right? Yeah. Yeah, the more people that call about the yeah. same intersection, it helps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So at least we got a couple people that can, Roberto lives out here in Watsonville, so he can do it as well. <laughs> right. And I'll do it too. Crystal, do it too. Get Crystal. And I have a question. Crystal good? Yeah. Um, so this is just, I think, do you guys, does Sophia do a survey question? Yes. <laughs> so I want to make sure I do that before okay. we end, make sure I take care of the um, survey questions. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you thought you'd get one over the new pair. <laughs> yeah. Let, let, let's, let's do it the abbreviated way. So for the three questions, does anybody have less than a five? No. No. They, so Nobody just has less than five. All, all of us are fives on your three questions. Yeah. There you We've go. We've been to this movie. And moving on. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. I do have a question. On a scale of one to five, uh, where 
one is uh, well informed, the five are extremely informed. Do you feel more informed about resources, community service, community agencies, and programs that are available to help with um, to help you live with vision loss? So we all say five. Five on everything. Everybody? Yeah. Okay. And then has this program helped you learn? How to cope with your vision loss? Yes or no? Always. Yes. Yes. Five. Yes. Five. Five. That's a yes. <laughs> That's a yes or no one. <laughs> yes. Do you feel less isolated and or part of the community since coming to this program at Business Center? Yes or no? Absolutely. Yes. 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 Give it a ten. <laughs> Since I've been coming here, I like the the atmosphere and the vibe here. It's really good. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, vibe really to the third good. power. We're a friendly bunch. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 I have a question, Roberto. I yes. would, well, I guess it's a comment. I really like your idea of the combo field trip with tips and tricks and and. <laughs> Oh, O and M, yeah. I think it's important. I, I wonder if we could. We'll talk about it. I wonder if we could work in maybe both because of you know, later down in the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think having possibly a navigation tips and tricks mm -hmm. would be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. That'd be yes. great. Yeah. yeah, that's what I really want. Yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely. Because yeah. Siri walking directions is really helpful. Also, you know. And there's. What's that one that we've used, Lori, for years? The square one? Oh, blind square. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't use it anymore because I use I try to use maps more when I'm planning a trip. But um anyway. Baby, didn't we used to do um, like a Christmas shopping? We did, but we're gonna teach people how to shop online. Oh, you didn't do that. Um, actually, we could do that, but if there's interest, um, I just I... wonder was wondering mixing that with some of that stuff that we're going to say. Oh, well, there's an uh, there's a thought too. Because if you're going to go, I don't shop for very much to go shopping. I'm used to it. I'm married. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, real quick question: Does it, does anybody know the name of the side street? Eric's Deli, which is across SoCal, right where Vista Center is. Eric's Deli, we've eaten there before. Do you know what that side street is? Um, off is, of it, is it Mission Drive? The name of it? Yeah, it's still, is it still Mission Drive. Mission Drive? Or is it yeah, commercial? Yeah, it's Mission Drive. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is the second medical building area. So you keep going past the first one until you get to the second one on the left. You know, I just saw people with the plaza, doctor's plaza on this. Yeah. So that's most, more visible. All right, bye, everybody. Thank you. It's been great. Yep. Thank you, Thank you so much for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 All right, we'll see you. Take care.